Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Tevron here, and welcome back to Aviary Attorney, where I think we're about to hit the ultimate climax of the game. We are once again required to defend an innocent man in Valerity this time, and I think we actually have what we need to get the job done, so fingers crossed, let's go. I have to run, monsieur, but you have to do your best. Monsieur Fulpis and Sparrowson believe in you. Sparrowson? You've seen Sparrowson? How is he? There's no time, monsieur. Good luck. Are you quite done, Falcon? Very much so. Let's begin this trial. Okay, so let's remember what the friar said. Select a statement to question. Um, point blank through the chest is the one that comes most readily to mind. Frere Remus claimed that the girl was shot point blank in the chest. Actually, she was shot in the back. The girl was clearly shot in the back. I know, I remember seeing the bullet wound for myself. Then why didn't you say anything? Are you just so eager to kill someone for whatever reason? Jeez. But that's quite a glaring inaccuracy in the wolf's testimony. It is an inaccuracy, but it is an irrelevant inaccuracy. You're blowing my mind. I had thought that you were perhaps a bit more rational than you're proving to be, but... Does it really matter if the girl was shot in the front or the back? Either way, a girl died at this pig's hands. It matters because it shows he was fucking lying. You bloodthirsty, moronic lioness. Yes, it does. It does matter. If the girl was shot from the front, then this might indicate a police confrontation turned ugly. But if she was shot in the back, then what? This could indicate that someone targeted and assassinated her before she could even react. That doesn't paint the inspector in a particularly flattering light, Falcon. Madam, you're missing the point. A shot to the back breaks the currently established narrative. The girl was targeted and murdered in a stealthy professional attack. Therefore, this was not an ordinary police confrontation. You've made an assumption, Falcon. No, you have. You are constantly ac accusing us of doing what you're actually doing. You've assumed that just because the girl was shot in the back, she must have been stealthily killed. If you don't know the person behind is behind you and they shoot you, it is stealthy. There are other possibilities. Perhaps the girl was scared by the police, started running away, and was shot in the back as she fled. If so, then why did the friar not say that? That scenario isn't possible. If the girl were running away, then she would have been at least a couple of steps away from the killer at the time of the shooting, right? Right? But I know that the killer was standing right behind the victim. They were less than one meter apart when the gun was fired. They were standing that close? How could you possibly know that, Falcon? We have a bloody handprint. We saw a bloodied handprint on the girl's shoulder. What do you make of that, madam? Well, I assume any bloody stain would belong to the victim. A mark made with the girl's dying breath, perhaps. No, it was the print of a left hand on the girl's left shoulder, near her upper back. The angle and positioning of the print indicate that it only could have been caused by another person. That's why I'm so certain that the killer was right behind the girl at the time of the attack. I see. That's quite a theory. But Falcon, you've left an important question unanswered. Why was the handprint bloody? The print was made with the victim's blood, yes, so it can't possibly have been made prior to the shooting. Now you're making an assumption, yes? It was Judge Romulus, and it was his own fucking blood, because he got shot by Cocorico, another innocent that you have killed. The killer must have wiped his hand on the girl's clothing after she had already died. And if that's the case, then my suggested scenario is still possible. The girl may have been running from the police when she was shot. Then why would he even have touched her blood? No. That's... 
I'm still trying to work out the details. But I know that the print was made prior to the shooting. Maybe the shooter was injured and his hand was already covered in blood. You talk big about breaking the established narrative and now you present me with that baseless drivel? Well, where do we go from here? How does this handprint nonsense really affect the situation? It affects it by proving the friar was lying. You are driving me insane. Yeah. Do you find something funny about this situation, Inspector? Please, for the love of God, Valerity, don't provoke her. I do. This whole trial is patently absurd. It's an animal court through and through. But there was something particularly funny about that last exchange. You were both so focused on when and how this handprint was made that you missed the larger issue. I don't have a left hand, you idiot. I couldn't possibly have left that mark. How could you shoot a gun, period? You don't have either hand. I just noticed that. Or is your hand just tucked into that sleeve that's holding the, the arm that's holding the cane? Oh, right, of course. Well, madam, what do you say to that? Yes. Maybe the handprint came from an accomplice. Or maybe it had nothing to do with the incident, or... It feels good to see someone speculating wildly for a change. Okay, fine. I don't have a solid explanation. I must concede that it's possible, maybe even likely, that the person who left the mark was the murderer. Therefore, as much as it pains me to say it, I must concede that the inspector probably did not shoot the girl. So, that's it. The inspector is off the hook. No, there's still the matter of the incident at Leigh Halls. What incident is this? I know nothing about it. Huh, as if you don't know. A beggar rat was shot and killed in Leigh Halls a few days ago. The attacker was described as a scowling police officer who wore an eye patch. Sound familiar to you? Go on, Falcon. Explain the pig out of this one. He's a rooster? Rooster. Not a pig. Rooster. They go... Cock-a-doodle-doo, not... <laughs> Just so you understand. Until five minutes ago, I was at a loss. But I was recently presented with a piece of evidence that makes the answer all too clear. This was a false flag operation. False flag? Explain yourself, Falcon. Madam, what do you know about Remus's twin brother... The man known as Romulus. Not much, only that he was forced to flee the country by our oppressive government around a month ago. If that's an example of oppressive government, then your revolution has no right to be doing what it's doing. Cause he is as corrupt as they come. That's a half truth, madam. You see, it is correct that Romulus is being hunted by the police but I have had the suspicion that the wolf was lurking in Paris itself, although I have never managed to find definitive proof of this. Anyway, it turns out that my suspicion was well-founded. He was recently apprehended, I think. You think? I don't know the details, but it doesn't matter. What's important is that a reliable friend found this on Romulus's person just moments ago. An eye patch. Romulus has perfect vision. Why would he need something like this? There is only one plausible explanation. It is part of a disguise. Something to conceal his identity and make him appear as someone else. A disguise? You're saying that Romulus shot the beggar rat just to frame this police inspector? He also shot the croc monsieur to frame Cocorico. Exactly, madam. It is no coincidence that Frere Remus happened to find the very same inspector, just as another murder occurred today. So, Remus was in on it too. Obviously, he was lying out his muzzle. Two wolves working together to make this policeman look like a murderer. But, why? Why would they do that? For their own wicked ends. To rile you up, madam, to make you lust for violence. 
And if your actions today are anything to go by, I would say that they succeeded. Damn, I've been so stupid. You think? How did I let myself get so misled by a couple of wolves? This trial is over. Go, Inspector. You're free. Ah, it's about time. You're letting him walk away, ma'am. Of course, it would be criminal to confine an innocent man any longer than necessary, even if the man is a bitter, stubborn pig. I will concede the bitter part, and I understand that the pig is a, is a police joke. Before any of you yell at me in the comments, I, I get that. I'm making a joke of my own. Falcon. Yes. I don't understand you. You're stupid. You're reckless. But you fought Beacon Talon for my freedom. I'm starting to suspect that you aren't really the Viridian killer at all. Valerity, you and Miss Beaumort here are two peas in a pod as far as intelligence goes. It certainly took a long time to pass that fact through your thick skull. Inspector, if you're still hunting that villain, maybe you should speak with Reynard Voltus. When this is all over, I mean. I hear you've been doing some research into the Viridian Killer. Maybe he knows something. Ah, maybe I will. Madam, it appears that your gang of rebel filth don't intend on assaulting the palace anytime soon. I'll relay that information to the artilleryman. Maybe we can keep a peaceful standoff going until this blows over. Thank you. I appreciate that. Alia, stay out of trouble. So, what happens now, ma'am? We're going to continue our protest peacefully. We're going to stand here, chanting and shouting until the Prime Minister and the King both step down out of sheer humiliation. It might take days, weeks, but if we manage to change this country without one more person being harmed, then... Well, well, well. Look who returned. Madam, I just saw the police inspector strolling out of here, unharmed. Why did you let him go? That's simple, Remus. We all had a discussion. And we came to the conclusion that I had been misled by a couple of wolves. Oh! How many lies have you fed me, Friar? Just how much damage have you done to further your own goals? Did you help your brother kill the beggar rat in Lace Halls? Did you watch the girl die by the place de la Concorde? Now that I think about it, even the croque monsieur's death was surrounded by details that made little sense. Well, at least you can connect the dots when the evidence has been pounded into your thick skull with a sledgehammer. I don't know what to think anymore. You know that this guy's a scumbag, at least, ma'am. I say shoot him. Piero's right. We won't judge you for killing this man, madam. How about we not do vigilante justice anymore? It's the least I deserve for my sins. Go ahead, madam. What are you waiting for? Pull the trigger! Do it! Falcon, you have proven yourself as having clear judgment. What do you say? I say let him live. To be tried in a court of law. Madam, you know what the right thing to do is. Show us what kind of leader you wish to be. You're right. I said that this will be a bloodless revolution, and I can't make any exceptions, not even for a monster like this wolf. Wow, this is amazing, completely unprecedented. You've buckled all of my expectations, avoided every temptation, and opted for an option that shouldn't even exist. Well done, madam. Well done, Falcon. You have demonstrated the power of pacifism in its purest form. What's your deal, Wolf? What angle are you playing now? But unfortunately for both of you, I'm no pacifist. Damn it. Just shoot him. 
Everyone, get down! Who killed him? Who shot him? Oh! He shot himself? Suicide. Shooting himself in the head? What a loony! No. Not a loony. We better hope that Valerity got there in time. Otherwise, that's the signal for them to rain every bit of ammunition and ordnance they have on our heads. Hardly a surprise that the wolf would be too cowardly to face a real punishment. This isn't right. It's not the solution I wanted either, Falcon, but I can't say I'll mourn the friar's death. No, that's not what I meant. I meant that it doesn't make sense for him to kill himself so abruptly. And that comment of his, it was almost like... I think we need to get out of here. All of us. Right now. Falcon, what are you talking about? Ah, uh, that was a gunshot. Really close, too. I... I can't afford to hesitate. It's me or them. Officer, hold your fire. No way. I... I can't afford to take chances. It's me or them. Damn it, duck. It's me or them. Fire every cannon. Please be moved. Damn it. I mean, you're dead because of their evil scheme and that duck's cowardice. Can anyone hear me? Where are you that it's so dark? Piero? Fontaine? Hello? Anyone? I'm here, madam. Falcon? Huh, of all the people, I think... I made a mistake, Falcon. I think you've made a great many mistakes, madam. Where did I go wrong? Was it when I lost my temper over seeing that dead girl? No, it was before that. Or was it earlier when I shot that prosecutor? That was bad. Certainly, I think your mistakes stretch a long ways further back than that, though. Or was it earlier still, when I first listened to that monstrous friar in the first place? Yes. I've made a lot of mistakes. We've all made mistakes, madam. Most people's mistakes don't spark bloody revolutions. No, you got that right. Can you move, madam? I don't think so. Give me a minute. I think I can clear some of this rubble. Hmm, February the 15th. Somewhere under the rubble, near the Palais Royal, apparently. Um, is this Sparrowson writing this? Dear Monsieur Volpus, I am writing you from the Daimiao Railway Express. Modern technology is truly amazing. I've decided to take your advice and have gone on vacation until things settle down. The king fleeing to Britain? The Second Republic taking over? It's all crazy stuff. Anyway, before I left, you asked if I knew what happened to Falcon. Well, I got my hands on a copy of the official police report, and it says that Falcon died during the attack on the barricade. But it also says that the police didn't find a body. Same as Leonie Beaumort. Weird, huh? Rumor is that he was probably blown away by cannon fire, but that doesn't sound right to me. The Falcon I knew was tough and intuitive. I think he found a way to escape and survive. So, in my opinion, he's still out there. It's possible, isn't it? Anyway, I should wrap this letter up, because I'm about to reach my stop, Vienna. I'll let you know how Mademoiselle Signy's parents are doing. 
Maybe you should come pay a visit sometime. Send my regards to Mousy. Yours sincerely, Sparrowson. P.S. I see a person selling some kind of strudel. What is it? P.P.S. Delicious, that's what. Okay, so this is the absolute end. Well, we know that Falcon survived. I mean, if they successfully got out of the rubble, he survived. I am very interested in going back and seeing how we can fix the, the parts that we didn't quite get right. I would love to actually discover that the judge was the purchaser of the chocolate, and I would also like to save Cocorico. Okay, we've reached the end of Route C, Fraternite. The ending you received was determined by the decisions you made in Chapter 3. Try tackling the trial in the catacombs differently in order to see a different ending. Thank you for playing Aviary Attorney. Thank you for making such an entertaining game. Alright, friends, I have not yet decided whether I'm going to do my replays of those thing, things on camera or not. It, it depends, really, when I get into it, if I can make a cohesive video that's, that's worth uploading for you guys to watch. So we'll see how that shakes out. Hopefully, though, you've enjoyed going on this journey with me. I've certainly enjoyed this game. Not so much as sort of a detective investigative game, because I think it was a bit lacking in that sort of thing, but the overall story and the characters were great, especially Sparrowson. Sparrowson is my favorite. Sparrowson... Number one, Team Sparrowson all the way. In any event, I hope you guys will come back and join me on my future adventures. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Teveron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.